I think, you know, in an industry, it's common, people want to pay back in about a year and a half to two years. Like you can't say it'll make $10,000 a year and it costs $500,000 and 50 years will break even. They want to break even in a year, okay? So um, you'll see this if you, like I said, you won't see this in pharma or batch or specialty chemicals, but you will see it in refining and, and, um, and uh, ah, refining and um, basic commodity chemicals. So I can see you guys want to go and I kind of want to go too. So let me just tell you what I did here is, is instead of using um, WA and WB as inputs, okay, I redefine the problem so one input is um, WA, but the other input instead of being WB is actually the sum of A and B, okay? So I've just redefined the inputs. Obviously, if I have a control that calculates w t U2, that's WA. If I have a control that calculates U1, that's the sum. I know WA so I can figure out WB and implement it. It's not a problem, okay? So if I redefine the input like this, then I end up getting a gain matrix that has a zero there. Okay, and if you do that, then you'll get an RGA that looks like this, and then there'll be no interactions between the controllers. So uh, the best strategy for this problem actually is not to try to pair the variables together in a certain way. It's just to redefine one of the inputs to be the sum of the two flow rates, and then you'll minimize all the interactions. You can look at the details if you like. Let's go eat now. I mean, class is dismissed.